In this lecture, we're going to discuss and introduce the concept of the mole. Uh, so the mole is, uh, it's a counting term. It's a lot like a gross or a dozen or not a lot that I use regularly other than a dozen or a gross. But let's, let's, let's use a dozen because I feel like that's a, a pretty common one. Um, if I have one donut, I have one donut. If I have one dozen donuts, I have 12 donuts and I'm much happier. So this word dozen really means 12. Similarly, a mole is going to be a counting number, like dozen equals 12. Mole is going to equal 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is a much larger number than 12. So if I have one donut, I can also have a dozen donuts, which is 12. And if I have a mole of donuts, I'll have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. Um, and so that's a lot. If um, I had an actual mole of donuts, it would cover the earth in a layer of donuts five miles deep, or eight kilometers, um, which is absurdly huge. But remember, we usually use moles to talk about atoms and molecules, which are much, much, much smaller than a donut. So while my one donut can also be discussed as a mole of donuts, and that's a lot, if I have one carbon atom, it's super itty bitty, but if I have a mole of carbon atoms, I have something I can observe on the macroscopic scale. And it's not nearly as big as five miles of donuts above your head. Instead, it looks like a small pile um, that you could hold in your hand, and its mass would be 12 grams. Um, And so this word mole is really just a, a counting number or a quantity that represents this large number right here. Um, we actually call this number Avogadro's number, um, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And so we can use it to, in a lot of ways. We can, since it's just representing a number, we can have a mole of anything. We can have a mole of atoms. So if I have a mole of carbon atoms, it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. But if I have a mole of carbon dioxide molecules, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Or if I have a mole of donuts, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. So we can use this actually as a conversion factor as well. It's giving us this equality between moles as units and anything. Um, I'm using particle here to represent atoms or molecules or donuts. Um, so I have one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles for my conversion factor. And I can represent that as a fraction, depending on how I need to use it in a calculation. So let's do a quick calculation. How many hydrogen atoms are in a mole of methane molecules? So I have my starting piece of information here is that I have one mole of methane. And I want to know how many hydrogen atoms I have. So I'm going to start with one mole. CH4. I strongly, 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 strongly recommend writing the chemical formula or the type of element that um, the mole is referencing. To think of mole as my unit that I always give the context for when I'm using uh, dimensional analysis to solve problem. Uh, because sometimes we'll have multiple different types of moles in our conversion factors, and it gets really confusing without that. So I have one mole of CH4 molecules. I'll even write molecules. 
Now I can use Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd equals one mole to get to the number of molecules that I actually have. So in my one mole of molecules, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd methane molecules in one mole of methane. So now unit-wise, sorry, switching colors. Unit-wise, this will actually cancel moles of methane, moles of methane, great. And my new units now are methane molecules. Um, but I'm not gonna stop there because I don't actually wanna know the number of molecules. I wanna know the number of hydrogen atoms. So I need to create a new conversion factor. I need to know how many atoms are actually gonna be in a molecule. Because right now I have units of molecules and I know I don't want it. And I wanna know the number of hydrogen atoms. This is where I want to actually end my calculation is with the units of hydrogen atoms. So I need something that equates these two together. And I can create this on my own. One molecule of methane has four hydrogen atoms, and I'm getting that from the subscript. And so this equality actually is a conversion factor that I can plug in right here. So in one molecule of methane, I have four hydrogen atoms based on just the chemical formula that I have. Now my CH4 molecule units cancel and I'm left with units of hydrogen atoms. So I can plug this into my calculator and I can calculate the number of atoms that I have, which is gonna be 2.4 times 10 to the 24th hydrogen atoms. A lot of hydrogen atoms. So we'll use moles to represent the number of atoms or molecules. And we do this because chemical reactions are based on a number of particles colliding with one another with enough energy to form products. And so the products that form really depend on the number of particles. And that's why we have Avogadro's number, so that way we don't have to talk about number of particles, these huge, large numbers that need to be written in scientific notation. We can talk about them in terms of moles, which can usually be smaller numbers. Like, I have 0.5 moles rather than I have three times 10 to the 23rd particles. Um, but we can't, it, it's not practical um, to count out the number of molecules that we have in a reaction. Um, kind of like if you were um, constructing bicycles on a really large industrial scale, you would not buy parts based on counting out I need 1 million bolts to make these, you know, 500,000 bikes. Instead, you would buy them by weight, um, knowing the average mass of one bolt for the bikes that you're gonna have would allow you to say, oh, I just need this, this overall mass of these, and it'll get me pretty close to the number of bolts that I need. Well, you do the same thing with molecules that you do um, if you actually run a very large um, production company. Um, and so instead of counting out particles, atoms or molecules, we weigh them out. Um, and so we'll report things in grams to represent the number of particles we have for a chemical reaction. And that means we need to be able to convert between the number of molecules or moles and the actual mass of something. And we're gonna do that using molar mass. Molar mass or molecular weight, you can use these words interchangeably, um, is really going to be the sum for any molecule of the elements molar masses. Remember, this is coming from the periodic table. 
And in the periodic table, there's a number that's that weighted average, the mass of an atom. And that's what we're using here. And it's the same if it has units as, um, it can be units of atomic mass units or grams per mole of that substance. And they equate to be the same. So let's take a look at carbon dioxide as an example. My carbon dioxide is composed of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. So I run to my periodic table and I look up their molar masses for each of the elements. And carbon has 12.01 and um, oxygen has 15.999 grams for, per each mole of oxygen. So I'm going to use this mass for each of my atoms. I have one carbon atom, so I can multiply this by one, and I have two oxygen atoms, so I would multiply that mass by two, and then I would add these up. So this would look like my 12.01 grams per mole coming from my carbon, plus two coming from the two subscript in my chemical formula, times that molar mass of oxygen. Um, when I sum these together, I'm going to get a number that's 44.01. So one mole of carbon dioxide molecules will equal 44.01 grams. So I can weigh out a mole rather than counting out a mole of molecules. So let's consider fructose and calculate its molar mass. If you want to give this a try first, please pause the video and then rejoin me. So when I see this, I like to break things down based on the subscripts. So I have six carbon atoms. I have 12 hydrogen atoms. And I have six oxygen atoms. Looking at the periodic table, the mass of carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. The mass of hydrogen is 1.08 grams per mole. And the mass of oxygen is 15.999 grams per mole. Now I have six carbon, so I need to multiply this molar mass of one atom by six. We have 12 hydrogen, so I multiply the molar mass of one hydrogen atom by 12. And I have six oxygen atoms, so I multiply the molar mass of my oxygen atom by six. And I'm going to take the sum of this. I will multiply 12 times six and add that to 1.008 times 12 and add that to 15.99 times six. I get an answer that is 180. 0.15 grams per mole for fructose C6H12O6. When calculating molar masses, one thing I'll mention is it's important to only take into account the atoms and the subscripts. If this is seen in a chemical formula, or sorry, chemical reaction, where I have two fructose molecules participating in a reaction, sorry, O6 like plus oxygen or something. I only calculate the molar mass for the actual chemical formula. And I do not take into account the coefficient at all. I'll use that coefficient later in another way. So molar mass is extremely powerful, as I've alluded, because it ha can convert between mass and the number of moles of things. So we can go from weight to a number of particles. Um, and we do this a lot in chemistry um, because we practically measure things with mass, but we really care about the number of particles that we have. So um, let's use a molar mass um, value as a conversion factor. We've been writing its units as grams per mole. And remember that this is actually grams divided by moles when we write it this way for our conversion factors. So um, if I need to know the number of moles and I know the mass of something, I can multiply it by the inverse of the molar mass. 
Um, I'm going to make sure my grams units are on the bottom and my moles are on the top, so my grams cancel, leaving me with units of moles. That means that um, if my molar mass equals grams divided by moles, then 1 over my molar mass will equal moles divided by grams. So let's take that molar mass of fructose that we already calculated. We calculated that it was uh, 180 point, I think I got 1.5. Um, this one is using 1.6. So it must have used more values than I, or more significant, or more digits than I used. And if I'm starting with a 12.6 grams of fructose and I want to know the moles, then I'm going to arrange this so my moles are on top and my grams are on bottom, which means this molar mass, I like to actually think of it as being 180.16 grams equals one mole. Now I can use that equality to plug in as my conversion factor. And when I divide 12.6 by 180.16, I get 1.0699 moles. So why don't you try this example on your own and take in it um, by pausing the video and then return and we'll go over it. So in this case, I have silver atoms and I want to know how many are in 85 gram, an 85 gram silver bracelet. So 